Welcome to Castle Class Presents Roll 20. I'm your guide, Corey Longnecker. Uh, this is class number seven, where we're going to be discussing two tools. One of them is called Status Info. Uh, the other one is called Group Initiative, but it's gonna require three different uh, APIs to be installed. One of which is external, which is uh, Status Info. And the other two are internal, um, able to be installed through the Roll 20 script library. Um, so, if you need reminders on how to do that, you can check out our earlier videos where I go step by step and, and kind of go through those things. Um, I'll provide the link to status info, that code, on GitHub, and we can go from there. So status info does require both its code from GitHub and also a, another uh, API, which is token mod, um, which is one of the ones available from within Rule 20. So status info uh, basically allows you to select the token and it pops up a list of all the possible statuses or conditions. Deafened, blinded, uh, grappled, prone, dead, unconscious, readying in action, uh, concentrating, things like that. Um, and it allows you to, uh, it, what it does is it puts a small icon on the token itself as a visual reminder that that is one of the statuses. In addition, it pops a description for most things um, in the chat window so that you know and if you're streaming people uh, at home can see it or people watching can see it and that your players can see it so they know what that means. Does it mean there's advantage on something, disadvantage on something? You know, are you frightened? Does it mean you can't move? What's, what's the case? So that takes care of that. Um, the other one is called group initiative and it does what exactly it sounds like. It allows you to select multiple tokens by dragging and selecting a large group and then you click the macro button that we will put in there and it rolls initiative for everything selected, adds them to the initiative tracker and puts them in descending order for you. So it's a really cool tool. Um, it's personally one I don't use just because I prefer to have one monster in my initiative tracker. It's easier for me to uh, take account for. But yeah, it's, uh, it's there and, and you can do it. So um, I've already got the macros in and I've already got the APIs in. Again, if you need reminders on that, please check out our earlier videos uh, so you can see how exactly you go through that. I will provide the code for the macros in the description uh, in the video below. So let's go ahead and just jump in and see what we see. So let me switch here and we'll take a look. So here we are, we've got um, multiple things happening. Let me make this a little bit easier for everybody to see, especially the, this part here. Okay, sorry, I need to resize these windows just a little bit so that everybody can see what's happening. Okay, so let's start with group initiative because it's, it's pretty easy. Um, we want all of these tokens to be involved in the initiative that's a uh, role that's about to happen. So we click and drag and encompass all of them. And we click on the group initiative button that we have. And what does it do? It opens the initiative tracker, rolls for everything, and puts it in numerical descending order. Also, it goes into chat and tells you what each individual monster or player or hero or token rolled. So you can see all of that there as well. Group initiative, really easy. If you run games, then you want to be able to go through multiple things. Um, it's, a, it's a great tool for you. I personally don't use it, but that doesn't mean that it's not gonna work well for you. Um, something else you can do is go into the chat window at always with all of these APIs once you know the, the code for it. Um, and you can type group init, oops. And it gives you all of the possible scenarios for it, all of the um, parameters and tags and things that you can do with it. So that if you're in game and need a reminder, you can do it. Um, otherwise you can always, if you're out of game, go to your script library, click on the code itself and it will tell you uh, all these things. Additionally, here at the bottom, anything in pink is a button that you can click, um, and it has things set up pretty much the way that things run in 5e, so descending. Uh, it's based on a d20 roll, um, things of that nature. So if you're using a system that doesn't use a d20, maybe it uses a d6, you could change that set die size to d6. But those are options for you to play with. The way that it comes in its 
regular format. It works perfectly for D&D 5e. So let's now take a look at uh, status info. So let's say we have our lone hero here, Karados, and he gets one of these Aarakocras as a magic user, and maybe something happens, and he gets blinded because of a spell. So we can click on the token. This pops up, and then with the drop-down, we can choose blinded. We hit submit. You'll see that a icon up here has appeared. It looks like an eye denoting blindness. And then here in the chat window, um, you see that it describes what blindness means. It's a blinded creature can't see, automatically fails any ability check that requires sight, attack rolls against it have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Uh, maybe we click on it, maybe uh, something else happens. Maybe he's also deafened. So now you get another token up here to show what's happening, and you see deafened down here as well. Maybe a friendly hero comes and, and, and clears Karados of all of these. So you can, let me move this up here so you can see it. So you can scroll down to the bottom and you can clear all the conditions. Karados is back to normal. Um, but that's status info or, or condition info. You can choose multiple things, put them on there, and it tells both your players, you and if you're streaming, the people watching, what that condition means. Um, really, really cool tool, great visual reminder. I am a big fan specifically of uh, this first one, which is concentrating. I always forget that when one of my players casts a spell that's concentrating, um, to, to mark that that way. Um, it's something that if you would like to do, you could actually throw this um, macro with condition info, show it as a token action to all players. Um, that way they could set them themselves. Um, and, and turn them on and off, and that's great. So if they do a concentration spell, it's on them to mark it, um, and then that shows up that way, and then you know that they are concentrating on a spell and that if they take damage, that they need to make a save. So that is both status info and group initiative, two really, really, really easy um, tools to make your game much, much better. Uh, so we will be using token mod. I know we installed it. Um, it was used in one of here, but we're going to use it in great detail and I believe about two videos. Um, there's a really cool tool that we're going to use that for. But for now, stay tuned. And next week, I believe, or next class, we're going to be talking about a torch macro that's used in dynamic lighting. Really, really cool stuff. Um, kind of uh, simulates a player token carrying a torch. It, it, it illuminates a space. So we're going to work on that for next week. And until then, talk to you later.